This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode 31. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you live from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I am rolling solo today. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, and it's good to be back. I've had some amazing guests the last uh, couple weeks, months, I guess. I'm not even sure the last time I did a solo podcast, but... I've been having a ton of fun talking to people and and racking my brain about other people uh, to get on the podcast in the near future and absolutely can't wait. There is uh, a plethora of people that I, uh, that the, the harder I dig in my brain, the easier it seems to be able to come up with all these amazing folks I've met over the years and yeah, basically just get them on and talk because I think there's a lot of valuable information out there and, and, uh, I absolutely can't wait to share that with you guys. So, um, couple news items. We are still on a break here at free heel life land, which includes telemark skier magazine. So if you follow us on the social medias or you're on the mailing list, uh, other than the podcast, we're really not doing anything. Um, we kind of took a little bit of a break, partially because it's summer, partially because of the COVID thing. Uh, it's pretty much just me rolling right now with that stuff. Uh, and we'll probably pick up, uh, we're already starting to kind of look towards uh, opening for the season as we usually do about this time of year, uh, we'll start thinking about an opening date. Usually that falls sometime around the beginning of October, mid October. And usually, uh, if all goes as planned, uh, we kind of get the blood flowing towards the start of September. And you can probably start expect to start expecting to see more content popping up and, uh, start getting some of our shipments in for gear and whatnot. But I wanted to assure you guys that we are alive and well and all plans as of now, although it is 2020, so (laughs) who knows what else could possibly happen, but we are optimistic and feeling pretty good and hope to be your telemark source of not only entertainment, but gear and all the other goodies that come along, information, expertise, uh, come this season. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll kind of see what the season's going to turn into as we get a little bit closer. Kind of hard to say what it, what it may look like. Um, like I, I was joking around in the podcast bef- before these or before this one with the guys in Australia that, uh, uh, we might all be in better shape <laughs> if the resorts don't open. We might be in a a situation that's even more positive, right? Because we'll we'll have to earn our turns regardless. No uh, no wimping out. And uh, either way, stoked uh, stoked for the upcoming winter. So, kind of on that note of upcoming winter, what today's episode? I kind of got thinking about the upcoming winter. I think now that we've kind of settled into this more or less new normal, you know, as best we can. I'm sure everyone's kind of doing that at their own pace and whatnot. But, you know, I know I've been thinking about what, what does telemark look like in the upcoming season and you know, what, uh, what we can do. And quite honestly, you know, we're going to move forward regardless. Um, and I'm saying we, as hopefully collectively we as a snow people will continue to thrive and uh, enjoy our time on the slopes because that's what I'm looking forward to doing myself. But one of the things that I wanted to do today uh, is kind of uh, wanted to follow up on the episode I did about creating our own telemark industry. And I did get some really good feedback from people and I appreciate you guys writing in and kind of sharing your, your thoughts and opinions on that. Uh, I'm sorry if I haven't gotten back to you. Uh, sometimes it takes a little more time than I'd like to, to get back on those emails. But overall I felt like there was a pretty positive vibe to it. 
you know, there was obviously some naysayers <laughs> that are like, uh, you know, the idea of creating our own industry isn't necessary and yada, 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 which I appreciate your opinions too, because that's exactly what I'm always saying is if it, it takes a, a large group of thought to make change. And I think that's an important concept here. But what I wanted to do today is kind of build upon that concept. So in in my opinion, what makes up the nuts and bolts of any industry are gear. And that's kind of what I talked about in that past podcast. But more importantly, an industry is made up of people. So you know, for the gear portion, it's pretty obvious. We need skis, we need boots, we need bindings, uh, all that good stuff. And that, that seems pretty obvious. And and like I said, that previous podcast, if you haven't listened to it, you can kind of go back and, and maybe understand a little bit about my philosophy on that. And, um, maybe some of the aspirations I would have for uh, for telemark and how we make stuff. But, um, the people portion, something that needs some work to keep healthy and growing. Um, we are humans and we obviously need to be nurtured a little bit to stay interested in things and, and working together. Um, you know, I think we just kind of on that note, I mean, if you see what's going on in the world right now, there's a certain level of uh, emotional endurance that people have and or don't have in some cases. And I think more than ever in this, this day and age, we are sometimes we're a little bit impatient, you know? And so I think, um, you know, one of the things that's important is that we, uh, we work together and we keep people interested. And so specifically, I know I'm kind of going back and forth. There's obviously some parallels going in the world right now, uh, that illustrate what I'm talking about. But the point being, uh, you know, people make up telemark and that's pretty much what it comes down to. But to keep people interested in telemark, I think it's, it's incredibly important that, uh, we have people around us that like to telemark ski and, and see the value in it. Um, if there's one thing I've learned over the years of working in telemark is that if telemark skiers wait around for someone else to move the needle forward, uh, it is most likely not going to happen. <laughs> and I hate to say that, but it is up to us. Um, there's definitely a certain level of self-reliance that I think comes uh, with being a part of this community and moving things forward. And I can't emphasize that enough that um, both on the gear and the people side, it's very important for us to be as self-reliant as, as possible, you know, and uh, you know, I see that all the time online and I, I, people are, people are pushing it when things aren't happening. There are groups and individuals that pick up the slack and start thinking for themselves and start making things and tweaking things. And I think that's one of the coolest things is that people really start realizing that, um, it's, everything's up to them. <laughs> so, um, I, I just think that, uh, um, for those, you know, regarding the gear, for those of you that have listened to the podcast regularly, I've tried to expose the fact that passionate people have created telemark products from the beginning. And in today's world, uh, everything but the boots is fairly doable to come up with on a smaller scale. Um, you know, to get to production that that's another topic. And I just want to state that, state that clearly to produce it on a large amount might be different, but, um, you know, it's people that are pushing this thing forward. And I also want to say kind of 
more on the people topic, like I was saying, I am a true believer that behind every stronghold of telemark skiing around the world, there is a passionate group of people um, that have rallied together in that area to share knowledge, to create events, to share gear, and ultimately protect and share the telemark turn for the next generation. And there's just, I can't, I, I was racking my brain as I was putting my notes together for this. And I honestly, I can't think of anywhere around the world that doesn't have a sort of a, a stronghold, a hot spot of telemark where there isn't an individual or a group uh, of people that are really just pushing it in that zone. And that really says a lot for how this thing propagates, how it grows, how we share it, how we maintain it. And like any tradition, uh, there's a certain level of passing it on to the next generation and a certain responsibility that, you know, one has to share it with, with other people around them. And, you know, I guess, you know, kind of a side note, I mean, a lot of the reason I wanted to do this podcast, I've tried various things over the years, um, in telemark, whether it's making movies, making magazines, uh, giving talks, uh, various things, but, I feel like the podcast has been a really great opportunity, mostly because all of you are out there listening. And I so appreciate that because part of what I want to do is sort of uh, that oral tradition of passing stories along uh, to all of you out there that are interested in this because there is so much rich history that I've heard over the years, just bumping into people along the line, skiing, going to a festival or whatnot. And I just absolutely have been enamored by it and captured by it. And I think those, that's, I think what's fun about doing the podcast most is just being able to pass that along and record it. So hopefully you can listen to it now and maybe someone will come across it later And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the times, you know, these are stories of kind of what I want to illustrate today, which is, uh, how, how we can grow this locally and, um, how that really comes down to us. So, um, so kind of what I'm going to try and tackle today is just, it's not going to be a super long podcast. Um, I want to give you three action items to grow telemark in your area. And, um, you know, people are really the key ingredients to this. Um, like I said, you need passionate telemark skiers to buy the gear and keep the gear evolving. Uh, but without people, there is not really a need to have gear. I mean, we can whine all day about it, about how there's not new boots or this binding doesn't do this or whatever. But ultimately it comes down to this. If people aren't telemark skiing, it's hard to complain about the other stuff. And I'm all about action. Like I want to see us put action where, uh, other people are not because that's how we're going to you know, move, move this along. And, and that's super important, you know, because we're a community, we're a global community and it's incredibly important for us to, um, move it forward and it's up to us. So, um, so today, like I said, I want to focus on how you can help move things forward on your own, in your area, your ski hill, Um, how you can be a builder of sorts to help spread telemark in your own town, your local hill amongst your friends. And, uh, I want to share a few examples that I've come up with over the last few years that you might be able to use, 
uh, in your area as well. Um, I just want to preface this by saying that these three things are basics and don't require much to do at all. And that's kind of the point. Um, if it's too hard to do, a lot of people are going to avoid it because we're busy, you know, and there's no shame. <laughs> Trust me, I am, I am not ever invoking any shame on those that are not spending extra time spreading telemark in their areas. I would love to see you do that if you have extra time, but uh, the world is a busy place and, you know, these are extracurriculars. So, um, you know, if you've got things squared away with the family and work and you've got a lot of extra time, get after it. And these three basic things might be something for you. If you want to get more advanced and tricked out, there is always room to grow. And I think as I kind of go through these, you can obviously see some extensions of what these things could turn into. Um, but that's really not what this podcast is about. I just kind of wanted to, you know, most of us are in summer mode. Um, some of you in the Southern hemisphere that are listening to this are in ski mode. So you can actually apply some of these, but I think this is a great way for us to kind of think forward. And especially as we're kind of, uh, you know, preparing for the next season. A lot of times we're sitting around thinking about skiing and, this is a a good opportunity to start kind of going over some ideas. So, um, so the first one is start a casual meetup. I think this is really the basis of any telemark local community. And I know growing up here in Salt Lake, uh, you know, if you've listened to the podcast before, so I grew up skiing at a place called Brighton. It's a smaller ski resort in Big Cottonwood Canyon. If you're from the Salt Lake Valley, there's basically two main canyons on the front side of the Wasatch. You've got Big Cottonwood Canyon with Solitude and Brighton. And you've got Little Cottonwood Canyon with Alta and Snowbird. So, um, but growing up, I was at Brighton, which traditionally was considered more of like a snowboarder mountain, especially like in the 90s. And probably even till today, but it's just, it always kind of had that vibe. What's funny back, back then. And even to this day, when I'm traveling around and talking to people, a lot of times I'll say, Hey, I'm from Salt Lake city. And they're like, Oh, you must be an Alta skier, which I do have an Alta pass now. And, uh, but what I can say is it's, it's different than it was. And the impact that the, the telemark scene had when it was a lot of telemark skiers in one place is exactly what I was kind of explaining to this day, 20 some years later, people still think that Alta is this stronghold of telemark skiers. And I think that's a testament to how people back in the day, there was a concentration of people at Alta uh, that were telemark skiing. And I think a lot of that, um, you know, like, like I said, the first thing that you can kind of do is to create casual meetups and to get, I guess I was trying to illustrate the the concept of that is every hill. And I shouldn't, let me, let me back up. Not just Alta, like nowadays it's, it's cool because there's almost every mountain in Utah and I could go out of state as well. You know, I can think of the crew that skis at Alta. I can think of the crew that skis at Snow Basin. I can think of, um, you know, if I go out of state, you know, I'm thinking Idaho, for instance, our, one of our neighboring states, you know, there's the crew in Pebble Creek, you know, there's the crew in Grand Targhee, you know, you go north up to Bozeman and Montana, you got the Bridger Bowl people, you know, you've got, uh, I mean, you can go on and on and on. And I can think about how, each little community has these little core groups. And so the, the best thing that you can do in your local area is one, probably find if you're not already part of that local crew, introduce yourself. I mean, this is literally the one community where you could literally show up anywhere in the world. And if you're a telemark skier and you see another telemark skier on the hill and you just go up and say, hi, it's on. 
that that friendship is probably immediate and like i've always said there's there's a mutual understanding when you see another telemarker whether they're good bad or ugly <laughs> they put the work in and you've also put the work in and there's just a mutual respect and you know no matter what level you are you're going to make a friend and i'm i'm a i'm a true believer in that so with this idea of starting a casual meetup on your hill is set up a time to go take a run with everybody, you know, and, or, or have a, a group ski day, you know, once a month or once every other month and say, Hey, bottom of this chair lift, you know, bottom of chair four at noon where, you know, the telly crew is going to meet up. We're going to take a lap together. Um, or even within that group, you know, you got a crew that wants to ski the bump, say, Hey, bump day, first Sunday of the month, see you there, you know, and put something together. Um, one, one great time to meet up is if you don't want to meet up on the hill because you've decided there's no friends on a powder day, which is total BS because of course you want friends on a powder day. You want to, you want to hoot and holler with each other. At least that's the way I do it. Um, no, but what one group out there that I've absolutely loved and I've had on the podcast is the guys from Telemark, Colorado. And I think what they've done is a really and there's there's other people out there I can think of other groups as well, but Telemark, Colorado just came to mind first. So uh they've done a fantastic job of opera ski meetups. You know, it's it's not just being on the hill, it's saying, Hey, We'll meet you in the parking lot at, at A Basin and we're going to have beers and, and brats and someone's going to bring the hibachi grill and, and we're going to, you know, we're going to throw a little shindig after. And it's totally informal. It's, you know, BYOB. But what it's doing is enormous. It's bringing people together. And that is under, under a common idea. Like, Hey, we're all telemarkers. That's the only reason that, you know, like, Hey, come, come and hang out and let's talk. And obviously it's open to everybody else too, right? Like you're going to get drug along, (laughs) you know, with your friends, but you know, it's uh, refreshments are a good way to always pull people together. If anybody grew up going to church of any sort, you know, that's how you get people there. You always hold something with refreshments at the end. So, uh, so yeah, the local meetups, another idea to do these casual meetups is, you know, maybe do it around, uh, an existing event like world telemark day. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you know, that's a a perfect one. There's a, one of the early podcasts I, I talked about world telemark day and what it is. But these are those days where you can make an excuse to say, hey, I know there's other people that want to go telly on this day and utilize it. Um, The point being casual meetups when it comes to telemark is incredibly important and so easy to do because it literally is you saying, hey, let's go telemark together. But the power of of the group in the area. That's the point I was kind of trying to get at as I was leading into this. When there's a, when there's a strong telemark group in an area, it grows. It just happens. And it, it, it happens because, um, (laughs) honestly, you're, you're around people that are doing what you're doing. And, you know, I think especially in this era, it's incredibly important to have that support group to go telemark ski with because you're you're tackling the terrain on on the same gear you learn from one another you're picking up tips and tricks from each other you're visually watching each other and it's contagious it's contagious to the right people you know like i say over and over and over and over again telemark in a lot of cases is in most cases, is a personality choice. Someone that doesn't telemark is going to look at it and they're going to have one feeling or the other. It's I, and Generally speaking, it's pretty stark in terms of you look at someone, a good telemark scare, and you go, 
That is absolutely awesome. I want to do it. Or you're like, screw that. That looks terrible. That looks like my my knees are going to hurt or my legs are going to burn. I don't want any part of it. And there's just not a whole lot of middle ground, at least in my experience, in my opinion. And But I will tell you one thing. When there's a group of people doing it, whew, that's when it gets contagious because there's a, there's a strong group. They're helping out the new people and it's a unit and everyone's helping each other out and it's fun. And that is attractive to people. So as it grows, as your meetups grow, if you've got the best beer at your opera meetup, if you've got the best brats on the hibachi, you know, you've got the best turns on the hill. These are things that you're out having a good time, but People are watching and people become interested. And that's a that's an a incredibly important part of this. And uh, there's strength in numbers. So I will leave it at that. Strength in numbers. So that kind of leads me into number two. And, and I kind of hit on it in the first one with the casual meetups. But number two thing, number two action item to grow telemark in your area is 100% teach one interested friend each season. All right. So that is the challenge that I'm issuing you out there is find a friend. And honestly, you don't even have to seek people out because I kind of think it's like this. If you're already doing it, you know, you're, I'm sure if you're in a small area and you're like the only telemark skier. I'm sure that you've somehow attached Telly to the front of your name. Everybody knows you as like Telly Josh or <laughs> Telly Tay, Telly Ash. You know, everyone's going to have, they're going to, you're the Telly person. And especially if you're in those zones where there's not another telemarker, you're the person. You're the girl or the guy that, that is holding the keys uh, to the turn and how to, get more people doing it. So teach one interested friend each season. If that friend is just saying, Hey, you know, um, you know, it's, uh, basically like, you know, it, it's hard to find people to teach you. So it's like, if someone's showing any interest, just be like, Hey, yeah, I'm down to teach you. And I, I want to take you out and let's, let's find a way to do it. Um, as long as you're not charging for a lesson, um, you shouldn't get hassled by your local hill. I mean, that's just the gist of it. And especially if you're, you know, at a small hill and most, most everywhere, no one's really going to give you that hard of a time. If you're teaching a friend, you know, it's not like you're, you know, poaching from the ski school or trying to take business away from the mountain. This is literally just you taking your friend up and saying, Hey, I know you mentioned you wanted to tell him ski. Let's go do it. And, uh, you know, find a systematic way to teach your friends. And like I said, teach at a resort if possible. And I always say this resorts are where you want to learn how to telemark ski. The back country is, is awesome for soft snow walking around, but when you're literally trying to get reps in, it's not the back country, soft snow, is not your friend, you know, you're, you're probably going to struggle, you know, you're going to have a hard time knowing how to weight your skis properly, how to transition the turns. It's difficult. So, uh, the easiest thing is just find a bunny hill, a rope toe, something, you know, that's not going to cost you a lot of money and get on the hill. And, uh, that's, that's probably the easiest way to teach, teach somebody. So, uh, as part of this teaching, kind of going back to the first action item of, uh, doing the casual meetups, invite a person to come along and meet up with you to get to know all these other telemark skiers. Again, the, the community, I can't emphasize that enough. I mean, all these little crews and communities and groups of telemark skiers, this is this is the this is what ties it all together, you know. And so introducing them 
your friends, your new friends to the telemark crowd in the area. I mean, I can't think of a better way to do it. Um, kind of going back to those telemark Colorado guys. I mean, even this year, like, um, I remember they did a world telemark day celebration at Eldora. Um, I think, uh, the ham dog 2069 crew calls it Eldorado. So in case, uh, there's any discrepancy there, but one of the cool things they did at their meetup was a limbo on their tele skis. And I mean, these are simple things. They don't even have to do. <laughs> these are just bringing everyone together, but it's also getting you on the equipment, letting you feel it out, trying it out. And I know, uh, world telemark days, like I said, those are great excuses to be like, Hey, Joe Schmo buddy of mine, you know, I, I know you've been talking about telemark. You've been threatening it for a long time. What a better day to do it than on World Telemark Day. And you can celebrate an international holiday and get after it by dropping some knees. And you can show them how. So just quick recap. Action item number one, start a casual meetup. Um, action item number two, teach one interested friend every season how to telemark ski. So this leads me into... Uh, Action item number three, which is save your old gear and loan it out. So this is a big one. The hardest part about Telemark right now is lack of gear in your area. And I know that for a fact because that's why I opened it, uh, opened up a Telemark shop. <laughs> um, when, I was, when I was making Telemark ski movies about 10 years ago, and driving around the country, the the hardest thing to watch was that's when a lot of shops started closing down or stopped selling telemark gear. I mean, I literally saw that with my own eyes. And, you know, I would tour, I'd usually do 50 city tours in 90 days every fall around the country. And that was the craziest thing to watch was to see telemark gear disappearing. And, I, and, and back, I've talked about this in past podcasts as well, and I know I'm referencing a lot of past ones, so uh, forgive me if I keep saying that, but just for reference material, it's, um, you know, like I always said, Telemark isn't dead, but Telemark retail died in a lot of ways, and so it started disappearing. And I can think of so, so many shops that carried gear at one point, because it fits sort of the backcountry model that they were selling and then they stopped selling it. Well, that doesn't mean people are not interested in the area and that's kind of where you guys are coming in here. And I want to in, 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 uh, encourage you guys and gals to please hold on to your old gear because this is, it's important, okay? So to kind of illustrate why saving your old gear and loaning it out works, I want to I want to illustrate it through something that uh, we did here at Free Heal Life when we first opened up. Because I know it sounds easier like, oh, cool, save my old gear, loan it out. And there's all these logistics that come with it. Like, I'm not telling you to start a shop and I'm not telling you to do anything like that. I'm literally saying maybe you get a new set of skis, boots, and bindings this year. If you don't, if you're in a position where you don't need to sell that old stuff, or maybe you're at a thrift store and you find an old pair of boots, keep this stuff in your closet and hold on to it until something comes along because people are just hungry to try telemark skiing. And the first year that we opened, so 2014, I opened the Free Hill Life here in Salt Lake City, Utah. People are probably thinking, this is Salt Lake City. This is like a capital of the world for outdoor recreation and skiing, especially. I mean, our license plate says the greatest snow on earth. I mean, this is, we are a ski mecca. And what was funny when I first opened the shop in 2014 I knew I had to get rentals going and I just didn't know how to do it because I didn't have enough money to really spend on a boot fleet and a ski fleet and bindings and all this extra stuff. 
I mean, we were literally like a glorified t-shirt shop. I always say that. Like the first year, we didn't even sell boots. So how was I supposed to get a rental fleet? Well, what I just, what I did was exactly what I'm encouraging you guys to do, except I did it in a shop format, and I'm not saying do that. I'm saying uh, at least start out by just saving your gear. So I came up with this idea called the, I called it the START program, the acronym START, save, teach, access, reuse, and tell. Um, that was the acronym I came up with. And basically what it was is I didn't have rentals. And so I needed a way to sort of come up with a cool little acronym that sort of said, Hey, we're going to reuse stuff. And that was the way I could kind of justify taking older gear and renting it to people. You know, and like I said, in a shop environment, you got to have insurance, you got to have waivers, you got to have all that stuff. It's not what I'm saying here, but what I want to illustrate is what we did. Because when I, when I came up with this idea, I remember some people being like, yeah, people want the latest and greatest, right? And I said, no, I said, they don't want the latest and greatest. Well, of course they do. Some people want the latest and greatest because they're already telemark skiing, but guess what? When you're not a Telemark skier and there's no other shop or anybody that can loan equipment out, people just want to learn how to Telemark ski. And there's a wide variety of equipment that you can get on people's feet to let them try that. So going back to this idea that I had with the START program, save, teach, access, reuse, and tell. I took some of my personal skis that I had I took uh, a couple pairs of used skis that I bought and we put them on the ground and we spray painted them black. (laughs) And that was always the joke is in the beginning, we just spray painted everything black. So, but I wanted to kind of take the logos off these things. And so what we did, we spray painted them black and old Telly Tay, Taylor Johnson uh, said, Hey, I know how to make sticker decals. And I'm like, cool. Can you make some free life ones? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. So we spray painted all these skis black. And then we put these free heel life logos, stickers on those skis. And we called it the start program. And we started renting those skis for $20 for the whole setup, whatever boots we had. And (laughs) <laughs> the skis and we just started renting them out and in the in that first year and maybe even the second year I for sure rented out my own stuff as well you know like I'm like oh you're a 27 mondo boot looks like I got a 27 mondo boot right here <laughs> it's gonna fit you perfect and I would send them out and it worked because what it did was allow us to get people on telemark gear And what we've been able to do from that point on is build a true rental program. And that, you know, we don't do the $20 pricing. Uh, We do it for college kids and stuff like that. But again, access, give access to people. But what it, what it showed me was a really key point because we didn't know if it was going to work. Right. I know it sounds crazy. You're like spray paint, you know, skis black and put a decal on them. And they're like, skis are like 10 years old like who's gonna want to do that you know what a lot of people wanted to do that so that's the point i want to make is we need not overthink growing telemark we need to provide access to people that's what this is all about and so if i could do it with spray painted skis with uh that weren't brand new you can easily loan your old telly rig to a friend and teach them how to do it and that kind of leads me into the next thing that that I came up with at the shop, and that's the POT program, P-O-T, Pass On Telemark. And basically, this is the shop version of uh, loaning gear out. So what this kind of organically happened, you know, like we were a Telemark shop in Salt Lake, and a lot of people would come in, and we have a consignment program, but quite frankly... 
many times people would come in and say, hey, I've got this old setup. Okay, cool. Do you want to consign it? No, I'm not interested in consigning it. Can you just give it to someone? Well, <laughs> at first, I'm, at first we're like, well, no, we could, we can, we can probably help you sell it, and you'll make some money. And they're like, no, 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 you know, we just want to just give it to somebody. Make sure it goes to a good home. So, I kind of racked my brain about what we could call this, and we came up with the pot program. Pass on Telemark, P O T as the acronym. And it, it literally came out of that. People just saying, hey, I don't want this gear. Don't sell it. I don't want money, but find a good home. So the first year we would post it online and say, hey, first come, first serve. You know, don't be a jerk and resell this. But if you need gear, here it is. And now what we've evolved it into, and quite frankly, we kind of need to even evolve it more because I'd love to show these stories because I think by the second or third year we did this, what I came up with the idea, I said, okay, this is almost too easy. We just post a pair of boots or skis up there and someone just takes them. But I wanted to make sure we put some work into this, that the, the recipient was putting work into it. And there was kind of a way to see that. So we started requiring a one page essay about why you need this free pass on telemark equipment. And it worked. People started writing essays. You know, they'd come in and they'd be looking for stuff or they'd say, man, I really want to get into telemark skiing. I'm a broke high school kid. I'm a broke college kid. Um, I don't have any money. All right, well, cool. We have this thing called Pass on Telemark. Uh, why don't you write us an essay and tell us why you think you need this equipment? And so that was stipulation number one, write, write the essay. We're going to read it and we'll let you know. And the second stipulation is that we ask that on an honor system, when you have completed your time with this pass on telemark equipment, that you pass it on again to somebody else. And in hopes that it goes to another recipient much like them, later down the line and so on and so on and so on. And we've seen it actually work here. We've actually had someone take, write an essay, get something from the pop program and then bring it back and donate it again. And it goes to someone else. And I can't tell you how amazing that feels for us because 100% we're a shop to provide service and new gear and answer questions and fix your stuff. But guess what? A number one is we are here to help pass on Telemark, to share it, to be a community center. And that makes me feel so good is that we have an opportunity for people to get stuff from their garages onto other people's feet and they get to feel the same joy of making that telemark turn just by us trying to connect people and i think that's that's been an amazing amazing thing for us so those are two things i kind of wanted to hit on our pot program and our start program so if anyone says that you can't grow telemark with old skis boots and bindings they're full of it and I'm living proof. Our shop's living proof. My staff is living proof. They know it. And they know that it doesn't take a lot to get someone out on the hill and make it affordable and make it easy. And of course, we want people to come shop later on and whatnot. But if you can't even get them on the gear in the first place and provide something for them to try it, it's highly unlikely that they're going to become a long term telemark skier down the road. So um, I guess as part of that, just get your friends to donate their old gear. I guess if you don't live in Salt Lake and you are just hearing about our pass on telemark program too, people now, like I said, we need to get this on the website. It's not there. But if you email us, uh, 
we we can accept that gear and we're just always trying to evolve that program you know you can mail it in from somewhere else if you'd like and we'll get it on someone's feet but hopefully this gives you some ideas of how to keep things rolling in your area and it doesn't take much it take it literally takes one person that can really make a difference and help share telemark skiing and create opportunities for other people to learn it and i just i absolutely am such a big believer that th- this is a tradition it's a it's something that we like i always say we need to protect it and help it get to the next generation of people and we need to keep improving on it, you know, and that's, these are some ideas, some action items. Like I said, we got to take action. It's up to us. We are the industry. We are the ones who are pushing this forward. And I believe in you. I hope you believe in us. Hopefully you, uh, you've checked out free hill life before. <laughs> if you haven't, that's how you can support us. You guys is, um, go to freehilllife.com and check it out. That's our shop. If you need articles and all that kind of stuff, you can go check out that stuff on telemarkskier.com or telemarkskier magazine on YouTube has a ton of videos. Like I said, we'll start kicking that up a notch probably come September. Uh, You can email me at podcast at freehealthlife.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully you're vibing on this and uh, it gives you some ideas for the future. Um, Love you guys out there. This was a fun podcast. Like I always say, I get fired up talking about this stuff because I know how much of an impact like so many people out there have made because they're just at their local hill sharing their gear and passing the turn on. And this one is 100% for you out there. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for sharing your stoke with your friends. Thanks for lighting that hibachi in the, in the parking lot at the end of the day. And uh, hopefully one of these days I'll make it to your resort and we can share a brew and some turns. So until next week, my friends, I love you. I hope you're hanging in there out there and spread telemark always. Peace.